All right. Shalom, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. Very short video here. I wanted to share with you this article that somebody just sent me. You're not going to believe this. It quotes this same exact verse that you saw in the codes yesterday on uh, the Eclipse 2024. And I really doubt that this author saw my video. So that this brings another witness. Let's look at this together. Coming from WMD, biblical expert, solar eclipse to mark the beginning of judgment upon America. And here's what it says, Israel, an unusual solar eclipse that will traverse North America in April has some biblical experts pointing the deeper significance of the event, especially in light of today's extremely unsettled times. With deep understanding of classic Jewish and Christian sources, Mark Biltz of El Shaddai Min Ministries is sharing his insights into the upcoming solar eclipse that will take place on uh, Monday, April 8, 2024. Now, I don't know. Maybe he has seen my video. I don't know. But he quotes the same exact verse. Me and Mark are friends, and I know he is a subscriber, but I don't think he has time to be watching my videos. The total eclipse will pass over Mexico from the Pacific Ocean or at it around 11.07 a.m. PDT and continue over the United States, starting in the southwest and moving northeast until it passes over the shore of the northeast U.S. in northern Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. The eclipse will exit continental North America on the Atlantic coast of Newfoundland, Canada at 5.16 p.m. NDT. It will be the first solar eclipse visible in the continental U.S. and since... August 21st, 2017, and the only total solar eclipse in the 21st century where the totality will be visible in Mexico, the United States, and Canada. It will also be the last total, total solar eclipse visible in uh, the in the contiguous United States for the next two decades until August 23rd, 2044. A solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the earth and the sun, thereby obscuring the image of the sun for the viewer on earth. Total solar eclipse occurs when the moon's apparent diameter, as seen from earth, is larger than the sun's, blocking all direct sunlight and turning day into darkness. As it happens, the moon will, be, the moon will make the month's closest approach to earth just 223,000 miles, one day before the total solar eclipse, thereby appearing Therefore, thereby appearing as its largest on the day that it crosses between the earth and the sun. The total eclipse occurs only in a narrow path across um, the earth's surface with a partial solar eclipse visible over a surrounding region thousands of miles wide. In the Bible, solar events are recorded as having a remarkable and sometimes supernatural significance. Control over the sun was demonstrated by Elohim in the three-day plague of darkness, and it is prophesied to be an existential part of the end times. Uh, of the end times, let me just talk about that because I've mentioned this the other day in the Greg Braden video where he mentions it was a forty-day um, days of darkness, and it was you know it, the text talks about three days, um, and then I talked about how. Um, Something blocked out the sun for three hours in Jerusalem. And by the way, uh, uh, this kind of eclipse only takes seven minutes in your vicinity. Uh, it, however, it does continue to move into different places. But by that time, the totality of it is already moved. And you're seeing part of the sun um, coming from behind the moon. So it's only like a few minutes that there's it's, it's a solar eclipse not three hours um especially in one place right so something else blocked out the sun something else was in the sky in the time of the exodus planet x maybe something else blocked out the sun at the time of the crucifixion planet x maybe right here's what it says in um the prophet joel and i do believe joel was also in the code's uh, that we see, but I don't know it was if it if it was Joel two thirty one, but it was the verse from uh, from Amos that we saw. Right, the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great terrible, the great and dreadful day of of Adonai. The prophet Amos makes a similar prediction. This is what we saw <laughs> in the code. 
In that day, declares Elohim, I will make the sun set at noon, and I will darken the earth on a sunny day, a clear day. Remember that? We just read that yesterday in the code, that right across the top like a banner. It's another witness. And giving rebuke to Hezekiah to inform him that he would die from his illness, the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 13, 9, wrote, The stars and the constellations of heaven shall not give off their light, and the sun shall be dark when it rises, and the moon shall diffuse no glow, as Isaiah predicted. And, and what does is, what is Hezekiah ask the father to do to prove that his word? Because, because when, when Hezekiah reminds the father that he's repented and he did these things for him, Isaiah has to come back and tell Hezekiah that he's not going to die. And what does Hezekiah require of the father to prove to me that this is your word? What does he ask? He asks for the sun to go back 10 degrees, right? This is the opposite of Joshua's long day. So there is a, there is a astronomical event that's taking place. Isaiah says that the stars and a constellation shall not give off their light. Why? Because something's blocking it. We can't see it, All right? Interesting. The sun shall be dark when it rises, and the moon shall diffuse no glow, as Isaiah predicted, as much as he and as much later calculated by NASA. And by the way, I know some of you guys don't like NASA. Incidentally, that word in Hebrew means deceit, so I get it. Okay. Um, but on March 5th in 702 BC, in the 16th year before Hezekiah's death, a prominent solar eclipse appeared over the Middle East. It crossed the path. It, its path crossed the Arabian Peninsula, and the obstruction of the sun over Israel was more than 60%. A similar darkness, darkness is described in the New Testament after Yeshua, during, <laughs> during the, the, the crucifixion, right? Biltz, the author of Blood Moons, decoding the imminent heavenly signs, is, is an expert in both Christian and Jewish sources and correlates solar and lunar eclipses with biblical prophecy. And I am in agreement with that. Um, the Father created the sun, moon, and stars to communicate with us. He tells you that in, in Genesis. And why there's any debate over this is, is beyond comprehension. The Bible is very clear. So, so why do we, we go against that? He went to great leaps to explain the prophetic implications of the 2017 solar eclipses, though at the time skeptics, skeptics scoffed, at, and they always do. However, in the wake of the COVID-19 epidemic and the wars in Ukraine, the Middle East, and, and uh, far fewer objections are to be heard in advance to the upcoming 2024 solar eclipse. From a biblical, from a biblical point of view, the solar eclipse is meant to be a sign from Elohim. And built citing Genesis 1 14 as a sign that man that is beyond man's control. It's something that man cannot manipulate. Built has a love for both the Bible and astronomy and takes on this biblical verse as a personal as a personal service, struggling to understand the celestial signs. In 2008, he was studying the dates of the solar eclipses. If you refer to NASA's data, there have been a total of 12,000 total solar eclipses all over the world listed over a 5,000-year time period, said Biltz. I don't know if you realize this, but then there are several different types of solar eclipses and lunar eclipses. Your total, your partial, your prenumbral, yeah, no hybrid, different types. And so I did the math, and it's pretty simple to do. And so when I saw those, I thought, oh, my, oh my goodness. When was the last time that this happened? And by the way, you guys, some of you pointed out that he had miscounted some of the events that happened in the United States. He's, you know, he's a human being. He has the right to be wrong. Okay. He, he just used the resources that he had access to and, and made a count. And some of you pointed out that it was wrong. And I picked up on that as well, but I wasn't going to call him out on that. It, it's, it's, you know, he makes a good point anyway. All right. So, uh, I apologize for that, for not being as accurate as we should have been. With a bit of research, Biltz discovered that a solar eclipse took place in 1948, the year that Israel was itself declared itself a nation, and again in 1967 when Israel emerged victorious from the Six-Day War in a unified Jerusalem. 
with a little more research, he discovered another solar eclipse in, in 1492, the year the Jews were expelled from Spain and Portugal. Portugal. Remarkably, a, a partial eclipse appeared above both Rome and Jerusalem in 67 AD. One year later, Nero committed suicide in the year 70. The Temple of Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans. Intrigued by these converging facts, Pastor Biltz was, was puzzled by the appearance of the four blood moons in 2014-2015. If the celestial events are signs, what did the blood moon signify? Is it is in a epiphany, he realized that the celestial events were part of a, of a much larger cycle based on the Hebrew calendar. The Hebrew year that began on Rosh Hashanah on September 4, uh, 2014 marked the beginning of the seven-year Shemitah sabbatical cycle. This is why you've heard me talk about the Shemitahs. This is not a random seven-year cycle, built emphasized. Rosh Hashanah in 2014 marked the beginning of the Hebrew year 5775. The Shemitah years all go back to creation. If you divide 5775 by 7, it's precisely 825. September 14th, or more accurately, the first of Tishri, 5775, was the 825th Shemitah cycle since Elohim created the world. After connecting the blood moons to a Shemitah cycle, Bills realized that he had a that they had prof prophetic significance. They came as a sign to herald the world. The Yom Kippur War of 1973 was followed by four blood moons in 1968 and happened to be on the very day of the beginning of the 50-year Jubilee cycle, Bill said. In 2014, we had four blood moons which preceded the Hamas attack on October 2nd, 2nd, exactly one Shemitah cycle later. It fell on the holy day of Shemini Aseret, and on the last day of the holidays, Hamas attacked Israel and started the Iron Swords War. That was the last day. That's probably a good search term for the code searchers. That was the last day of the 50-year Jubilee cycle that began in 1973 with the Yom Kippur War. Pastor Biltz noted that the upcoming solar eclipse will take place on Rosh Hashanah, excuse me, on Rosh Kodesh, Nisan, the new moon marking the beginning of the month, which is referred to the Bible as the first month. That is the very beginning of the religious calendar, he said. It is the very day that Elohim's glory fell on Moses' tabernacle. It is the inauguration day of Moses' tabernacle. It is also the same day, though, that day Nadav and Avinu died for offering strange incense. It's the same day that the two sons of Aaron died. The first of Nisan is, has a huge biblical meaning. In its beginning, and just like its beginning of the inauguration of the tabernacle, I believe it's going to be the beginning of the judgment upon America. And Rosh Chodesh Nisan was the beginning of the three days of darkness in Egypt, Biltz added. The nice thing about the eclipses is, is that no false prophet can fake it. Like Pharaoh in Egypt trying to have his magicians multiply the frogs, an eclipse speaks in every language. It, does, it doesn't have to be translated. It is uniquely powerful sign from Elohim. Pastor Biltz referred to the Talmud in its, in its discussion of eclipses, Sukkot, 29a, which is specifically described solar eclipses as being a bad omen for the nation who has who who base their calendars on the solar cycle. The Talmud states that if an eclipse appears in the West, it is a sign that idol worship has prevailed. Right? You ever heard of American Idol? You ever heard of selfies? Okay, I could go on and on about idol worship. At the end of, the, of its section describing the omens containing with the eclipses, the Talmud states a disclaimer. When Israel does the will of Elohim, they have nothing to fear from all of this, citing the prophet Jeremiah as a source. Do not, let, uh, do not learn to go the way of the nations, and do not be dismayed by uh, portents in the sky. Let the nations be dismayed by them. Nisan is the very beginning of the religious calendar, Bill said. It is the very day Elohim's glory fell on Moses' tabernacle, and the glory fa uh, failed. It is the inauguration. It is the inauguration inauguration day of Moses' tabernacle. It is also the same day, though that day not. I've already read that. 
though, the day that Nadav and Avi, who died for the offering strange incense, so it has a huge biblical meaning. It is the beginning. And just like it's the beginning of the inauguration of the temple, I believe it's going to be the beginning of judgment upon America. Inter interestingly, April's eclipse will have a narrow path, roughly 115 miles wide, which will cross the path of the total solar eclipse of 2017, with the intersection of two paths being in southern Illinois, in the town of Macanda, just south of Carbondale. The spectacle will last up to four minutes and 48 seconds of total darkness. Remember what I said about the eclipse at the crucifixion? Three hours when it should take just a few minutes? Come on, think about that. What blocked out the sun and caused the earth to shake at the crucifixion? It wasn't the moon. What caused three days of darkness in the time of Exodus? It wasn't the moon. Something else. That's why we talk about Planet X and Nibiru in these codes. Twice as long as the solar eclipse of 2017. The path of the two eclipses from a, form a transcontinental X. In a strange coincidence, the only spot in the path of both eclipses receiving a double dose of this modern plague of darkness and the point of the longest duration for both eclipses is particularly part of southern Illinois known appropriately as known appropriately enough as little egypt the complete solar eclipse that transversed the continental united states in august 2017 ushered in the most devastating hurricane in u.s history four days after the eclipse hurricane harvey made landfall in the gulf coast of texas the first major hurricane to do so in over a decade over a decade the hurricane resulted in unprecedented flooding and prompted more than 13,000 rescues, displaced more than 30,000 people, and inundated hundreds of thousands of homes, at least 38 confirmed deaths, and was attributed to the hurricane, and damages were estimated up to $160 billion. Pastor Mark Bilt goes into depth concerning the current relevance of all these celestial events in his soon-to-be-released book, America at War, 2024-2026, The Sons of Light, and the sons of darkness, in which he explains heavenly signs of coming wars. And uh, I think that's the end of the article there. Very good article from WMD, just confirming what I showed you yesterday, the very same verse from Amos. Shalom to you. We'll see you in the next video, you guys.